Hey, Takeover Church, thank you so much for checking out today's message, whether it's on podcast or on YouTube. We are so grateful that you are here. We pray it blesses you and encourages you and that you will like, share, and subscribe across all Takeover platforms. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. We love you guys. Glad that you guys are here this morning. If you want to stand to your feet, I'm going to pray for you and we're going to get started today. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Go. Jesus, thank you so much for Sunday, Father God. We are so grateful that you are here in this place. You are present in our lives and in our hearts, growing us, maturing us, changing us, sculpting us to look more like you every single day. Father, we give you the glory right now. We give you all of our attention. And just let your face shine upon us as we take this time to, to worship you and to give you all of our praise. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
morning, or uh, sorry, communion this morning. Um, I'm just going to share a, a word before we do that. I just have a little bit of scripture uh, to read to you guys as well. Uh, but this is coming uh, out of Matthew 26, and uh, starting in verse 20. Uh, this is just the part of the, the story of the Last Supper with Jesus and his disciples. And it just says, When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, Am I the one, Lord? And he replied, One of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scripture declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays me. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. And then Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, You have said it. And as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. And then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from this, for it is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And then earlier, I was, I was just kind of reading over the scripture and this whole um, chapter kind of reading through. And before that, if we look back in uh, chapter 14, so before the Last Supper even is taking place, it just says, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you pay me to, to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. And from that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. And the thing that got me with that is, that happened before the Last Supper. During the Last Supper, Jesus tells them that one of them will betray him. And then he still breaks bread and wine with Judas. He still gives that to Judas and has that covenant with Judas as well. And as we were singing the, these, these songs up here just about the, the goodness of our God and how worthy his name is to be praised, it just, it really hit me as, as though, you know, it said that he made a covenant with all of his people when he went to the cross and when he rose again. And I just had this feeling like, in that story where it says, Judas Iscariot, you can replace Judas with your own name, and the story still fits. Yes. Come on, come on, Scott. Because it doesn't matter whose name is in there. As humans, we have a sinful nature. We do things that pull us away from God very frequently. But he still made that covenant with us. He still broke bread with us and chose to go to the cross for us because that's how good our God is. That's been a theme that we've been discussing in, in the boys' group for, I don't even know, since the beginning of the new year probably, is just trying to go beyond surface level things and really understand how good our God is. Really understand just the, the goodness that he allows us to live in. So, there, there's a couple tables set up here, um, so whatever you're closer to, as, as they continue to play up here, just come up, take communion, if if that is uh, a covenant that you believe in, because that's what this is all about. It's, it's us honoring that covenant, that reminder to us that he did that for us, that that covenant is still there. So if that's you, if you, if you believe that, then we're just going to welcome you to come up, partake in the elements, and then just, just pray on that thought just just praise him like lord you are just so good thank you that you are so good that my name can be replaced in there for judas's name and you still chose to make that covenant with me so i'm going to pray and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to do the, the communion and 
I just want you guys to pray on that, okay? Yes. Jesus, thank you so much for your name and your goodness. Thank you so much that even when you knew what Judas was going to do, that you chose to break bread with him and make that covenant, that even when you knew what we would do against your name, you chose to break bread with us and form that covenant. We pray that through this, God, that your name would just continue to be honored and glorified, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that you would continue to remind us of that covenant and how powerful it is. We pray this all in your name. Amen.
we worship you. We worship you with our words. We worship you with our song. Father God, with our attention, with our with our, our hopes and our dreams. We just lavish our praise and our worship on you, Father God. You are so, so worthy and so present in this place. Can you feel him, church? Can you feel him here this morning? Father God, we just pray right now prayers of the righteous people, of the faithful God that are powerful and effective. We know it, we believe it, we've seen it to be true. Father, right now we use our words again to worship you and to praise you and to ask for you to continue to stir up heaven on our behalf right now, Father God. Church, please pray with me. Jesus, we are lifting up someone who is asking for favor in a second round interview of their dream job. We're praying for a provision for starting a business that God would open the right doors and close the wrong ones. We are also praying for provision of a, for a mother who lost her job while getting over COVID. Jesus, there is no small part of our life to you. You are alive and awake and aware of every tiny part, every big part, Father God. And a big part for us is our is our work, is the work that establishes our hands. And we just pray favor over these people right now. We just pray that your hand would be so upon them that others would take notice, that that would be a part of their testimony, the blessings that are on their lives, Father God. That people would see that and that they would automatically see you. We pray for the ceasing of anxiety if there is anxiety. We pray for the confidence that is needed to believe that God is alive and working all these things to their good in Jesus' name. We are praying for the people of our community, for their hearts to be filled with Christ's love, joy, and peace. We are praying over a family whose mother passed away three years ago today. And we are praying over a young couple that is really struggling right now, that is a part of our community. Jesus, we pray and we know and we believe that you are with the grieving. We just pray for this family that is missing their mother today and always. Jesus, we pray that you would be a comfort to them, that you would give them peace in Jesus' name. We lift up this community that you would continue to grow it, that you would continue to challenge it. Lord, that we would grow with each other, that the roots would grow deep, and that the fruit would be rich in Jesus' mighty name. And we lift up this young couple to you, Father God, so tossed by so many things going on in their lives, Jesus, but so desperately loved by the people in this community, community and so desperately loved, Father God, by you. Jesus, we just pray that you would move powerfully in this situation, that shackles that are, that are holding these people down, Father God, would be, awareness would be given to be seen of those shackles, that those shackles would break and they would fall away. Lord, and that they would just fall haphazardly, arms open wide into your love and your devotion and the love that you have in this community. In Jesus' name. We are also praying for those who are desiring community. Praying for open hearts and spirits and readiness and openness. Jesus, we just continue on that prayer for all people, all God's people, to be drawn to you, Lord. For those who do not yet know you, we ask for revival. We pray that you would move powerfully and that you would equip your people to help and to facilitate and to love and to love well. In Jesus' name. We have two prayers. We have someone asking for prayer in their body. We are going to continue to pray over this father who is diagnosed with cancer and who is going to start his chemo treatment soon. Father God, we ask that heaven would come down, that heaven would reign over these bodies, Father God, that are filled with brokenness, Jesus, that are in need desperately of your healing, Father. It says that by your stripes, we have been healed. We believe it. We receive it. And if we do not have the strength to believe, we are surrounded by those who do. We ask for that wonder-working faith to believe and to cling to your hope. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people say, Amen. 
on some things that might be going on in our community. And the two things that came up this morning were prayer for, there might be some people who need prayer for their marriages or relationships in this place. And also, idols in their life. If people have idols in their life, and they can look like anything. They can look like a drug. They can look like a person. They can look like finances. They can look like all of those things. And if you, if either one of those comes alive when you hear it, we have this new fancy banner over here that says need prayer. You can go right over there after service and we will have our leaders waiting there to pray with you. We do not bite. We are gentle. We are kind. We promise there's nothing to be afraid of. Don't leave this place without the prayer that you need. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. On the other side of prayer is praise. And this morning we are praising God for this life-changing community and for hope. Yeah. In Jesus' name. This one simply says, I have a new friend at church. That's good. An amazing for amazing friends to celebrate my birthday with. Hey, hey. If you want to extend your hand towards Miss Alex this morning, she celebrated a birthday yesterday, and we are just going to pray over her as she goes into her new year. Does that sound good? Oh, yeah. All right. Jesus, we thank you so much for Alex. We thank you for the incredible young woman that she is, for the woman that she's going to be in you, for the growth, for the change, for the beauty, for God, everything that you have done in her. Such an incredible testimony, Lord, and it is only just the beginning. We ask for a year of fruitfulness. We ask for a year of the roots going deeper. We ask for a year of blessing in her work, blessing in this church, blessing in this community, and favor in the world, Father. We just pray that you would bless her and keep her and her and Joshua as they move towards marriage, Lord. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And this last one is, it's written in blue marker, which I thought was really cute, and is just so touching. It says, I get married in 168 days, and I have the best fiance in the whole wide world. Life is glorious. Life is glorious. together for Zach as he brings a word on our offering this morning. Morning y'all. So uh, let's start off. There's a few ways to give. You can go online at takeovergr.com. There's a gift tab. Do that. Or you can text that number right there. Or there's uh, those white buckets in the back. You can throw some cash in or a check if you'd like to. Uh, the thing uh, Adrienne said about idols was, was something that really, really hit me. I was thinking, thinking about the Israelites and way back when uh, Moses was up communing with God. He was talking to God. Moses was giving everything he had to God. And he goes down to history as, a, as a, an incredible man who demonstrates what it looks like to be surrendered. Uh, to God. Uh, while, meanwhile, the Israelites are down at the bottom and they're putting everything into this golden calf. It's something that they can manipulate. It's something they can create to look how they want to. They're putting their finances and melting their own gold so they can create this thing that actually doesn't have any power, but instead they have power over it. The, the, the golden calf didn't come in make them a slave. It was just a thing that they had, if they chose, they chose to follow this thing that had nothing for them. Meanwhile, Moses is up on top of the mountain and he comes down with a glowing, a glowing face, a face that's literally glowing from the beauty and the presence of God. So, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about something that's happened in my life and I promise that I'm not flexing. Um, but uh, I was led to give a thousand dollars over my normal tithe and that was money that it was hard to give away it was money I didn't expect to get back and it's quite honestly money I didn't have to get back it's, it's, it's for you Lord it's for the, the expansion of your people it's for the building God it's, it's for you meanwhile 
God puts me in position to start uh, a, a business that I really kind of wish a little bit. I wish I had <laughs> that thousand dollars that I, could, I couldn't really afford to give away at the time. Right. Uh, but God is putting putting put uh, putting things in my place to, that I don't have to worry about about money or about making it because God, through my surrender of saying that this money has no hold on me, has no bind on me, it is not something that is going to hinder the, the plan and the vision that God has for me. So it does not matter as much as everybody else might think it is. If God wants to do something, he's going to do it. And if he doesn't, it's going to fall flat. So I'm going into that and I'm getting just blessed on blessed on all these people who come around and want to help me and a following to to make this thing take off that I I don't deserve. I don't deserve at all. Um, another thing that kind of comes to my mind is imagine this that you have a house and God comes into your house and he gives you this thing. It might be a trophy, it might be, you know, whatever it might be, but it's like, let's just say that this thing is an object. What this object represents is your body, your finances, your family, whatever it is, this thing represents everything God has given you. It's the thing that God treasures the absolute most. He comes up and he knocks on your door, he gives you this thing, and he says, Zach, Tyler, whoever your name, whatever your name is, he says, this is my most prized possession. I hold this in the highest regard, and I want you to have it, and I want you to take care of it until I come back to your house and get it for myself. So, at first, you're like, the greatest honor in the world to take this thing from God and to take care of it for Him. So at first, I put it on my mantle right above my fireplace. I don't have one, but in this house, I do. And it's everybody can see it. You walk in, you see that thing. And it's like, that's my... That's my thing God gave me. He gave me this thing to take care of, and I'm gonna show it off, and I'm gonna show you, like, God loves me this much. He wants me, you know, to show that thing off. Yeah. That's for me. That is who I am. This embodies who I am. But at the same time, on that mantle, over time, I don't value that thing as much. Instead, I kind of clutter around it with alcohol and porn and it gets a little dusty. It, it, uh, it, it's, it's not standing out and shining as bright anymore because it's cluttered with a bunch of other things that it has to share the mantle with. It's not as it important to me. Maybe even I take it off the mantle completely and I put it in the closet. But I, but I don't I don't remember that God is going to come back one day and He's going to come and and see where that thing that He loves the absolute most, yes. the person that you are, yes. that He loves the absolute most, and how much you actually treasured it yes. and surrendered it and let it stand alone in knowing that that thing is everything that you need. You need nothing else. That thing is perfectly fine and more capable of taking care of you if it stands alone. Yes. It doesn't need the things around it. Take care of that thing. Yes. Treasure that thing. Because if you surrender all else, you, you, you surrender your finances, you surrender your desires, your loneliness, your, your heartache, and just let them know that that thing represents like Jesus loves you. He came to give you responsibility to just treasure this thing so that one day when he comes back, he can see on my mantle that like Jesus, I tried to take everything off that mantle. Nothing compares to who you say I am. Nothing else identifies and tells me who I am except for you. And in that way, Jesus says, test me in this, that there's a most prosperous life for you where he takes care of you in the absolute most ways Amen. when we surrender and let him have our full identity yes. and who he says that we are. Yes. So, if you bow your heads and I was long, long-winded, but I was feeling, feeling that. Um, Lord, uh, we love you so much. We just, uh, we just pray over these gifts. We pray over these these people, Lord, I pray that you would just you would just bless everybody in this room. You would you would help them to surrender and be able to know that you have them completely covered in every single way. Lord, you're too good. Um, I pray that you just continue to bless the service. You bless Matt. You bless our ears to be able to soak up everything that you have to say to us. So Lord, come and have your way. And we thank you so much for being here in this place. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And.
We got the. This is the first time that this duo has duo together. Oh. It is Jody and Scott from Church. Ah. Oh. You shut the mic off. Sorry. Welcome to Church News, y'all. Hey, I'm Pastor hey, Scott. This is one of our four leaders, Jody. Yeah. I'm, I'm the rookie, but notice that my mic works. That's right! That's right! Alright, that's, that's, right. right. that's, right. that's, right. that's no. Sorry, Joe, Alright, welcome to church. Uh, we have some new merch acts that we're going to give away today. These are uh, some pretty sweet takeover Ooh. church water bottles. that you're here. Follow us on social media just so you stay up to date on what's going on in church, uh, especially as it gets warmer out. We got a lot of stuff going on, you know, a lot of gatherings and everything, so just stay connected on social media so you know what's going on and you can stay in touch with, with all of us, all right? Let's get into it. All right, so we also have life crews. So church is a really great place to come um, and meet and reset and get taught and get fed about who Jesus is. But it, that's not community. Community goes on outside of that. And so I really just encourage all of you to try to get yourself plugged in. We have a few things already that are set in place that can help you get there. I'll just highlight a couple. Um, we do babe and boy crew. Yeah. 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 Boy crew. Um, on Wednesday nights, that's every other Wednesday, um, we do serve crews. If you're part of something um, at the church and you're helping put it on, you can meet in there. Um, also, there's a porn crew. So that is not, is it called porn free? Porn free. That's yeah. better. That's porn better free. than just fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good detail. Um, but that's the same. You know, if you are trapped into something that is keeping you away from being who you are called to be in Christ, get other people around you and attack that thing. So this might be a weird transition, but I also want to highlight a minute what we have for moms because it is a lot of work to be a mom and to be a mom of young kids. Don't try to do that alone. Yes. So to be at tea time as well, where moms can get together and figure out how do you be a mom, how do you be a mom for Christ, and do that journey together. So that's just a little bit of what we have. I brought props. Oh, nice. So, so all of you have these on um, your chair or a chair nearby you, so if you're interested in something like that or want us to know who you are, fill this out so we can get a hold of you, and there's also a sign up in the hallway. Yeah, yeah that's good. good. That's okay. good. That leads right into our serve crews, okay? So if you want to be a part of our team, she mentioned team nights every other Wednesday, we get together, we receive a word from uh, either Pastor Matt or Pastor Adriana, one of our other core leaders. And uh, we just grow together spiritually. And then also on Sundays, we serve together. So if you feel like you are you know, tech savvy or musically inclined, or most, right now, most importantly, the thing that we really, really need is if you just like being around kids and you're willing to maybe just say, you know, one Sunday a month, I can serve in kids and I can just pour into the next generation yes. and help them grow and understand who Jesus is a little bit better. We would love to have your help because that's an area where we do need some help right now. Um, so if you, again, if you feel that way, or I'll use her prop here, sign up on that card and uh, join the service. That's right. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So after church, if you, um, as the message is wrapping up, we want to pray over you. We really deeply yeah. believe that prayer moves the heart of God. So if you physically are in pain, if you're spiritually, relationally, emotionally, are going through something, then go back to our need prayer sign right That's there, it, yeah. and we're going to have some powerhouse prayers that are going to put hands on you and walk with you through that um, to the throne. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Yeah, That sign is pretty sweet, so, you know, sweet. even if you just want to go check it out up close, <laughs> and maybe somebody prays over you while you're checking it out, That's right. That's we'll do okay. that too. That's all right. um, <laughs> we also have some oh, very some fancy keys. Anybody? Lost and found up here. Oh, they are. Winner, winner. Oh, I was about to say, I'm about to give those away. We're about to have a giveaway of a car. The biggest giveaway we've ever had. Just chuck them out into the, into the crowd. You get a car. Yeah, yeah that'd be sweet. Wait, someday. We'll give away a car someday. That'd be awesome. 
But uh, that's it for church news today. So if you guys are uh, note takers, yes. um, which you should be, all right. Well, you know, as Matt likes to say, the more notes you have, um, the more likely you are to get into heaven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a bad joke. I should say. That's a bad joke. All right. Anyways, get your notes out. You're ready to take some awesome notes because we have the man himself. Our lead pastor, one of my best friends, Matt McClure, coming up to continue the series Dunamis. Good morning, Take Over Church. How are we doing? Good morning. What? Good, man. I have no idea what you were saying. That's through me. I thought you said, dude, does. I was like, wait, what? Um, yeah, good morning. How was that time of worship? Come on, somebody. Yeah. Is anybody else just leaving here today? I am a lover of your presence. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I don't want to love anything else. Like, let's just go. We can stay in that moment the entire day and accomplish whatever God came to accomplish this morning. Amen. 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 Well, this morning, as uh, amazing Pastor Scott and Jody, whoosh, Jody just breathed a new life in the service. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you are awesome up here. What's up? Everybody makes some noise about man. Yeah. Yeah. My laws in the back going, he doesn't need a microphone. He yeah. has one volume, but it's too loud. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> but thanks, Dave. You the man. You the man with the plan. And uh, yeah, bro, that was, oh, that worship itself sounded incredible today. Like, oh my goodness. Yes, yeah, so this morning we are continuing our series, Dunamis. Who's ready for the Word of God today? Yeah. Come on, somebody. If you weren't with us last week when we kicked off this brand new message series, roll back, have a, have a listen, have a watch, have a think, have a ponder, uh, have a pray, give the Lord. But check that out because I want to tell you before we dig into anything, dunamis is a really weird word. It's a fun word, and it's a word that you have probably never heard besides last week in your life unless you took some sort of like Greek class in the Bible college or potentially, you know, I don't know world studies. But anyways, so Greek, what kind of Bible you got now? Okay, we're going to be all super saint and stuff. Calm down, super saint. Anyway, so Al's the best. She totally showed me up. So dynamis is a Greek word. And so anytime in the Bible that you read the word power, God's power, anytime you read that, it is actually this Greek word, dynamis. And dynamis literal definition is, are you ready for this? It's not just simply God's power, probably, potentially, and 100% absolutely more important than just simply being God's power. It is God's ability. It is God's ability. The Greek dynamis, what this literally means is God's ability. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page going forward in this service. Yes. Sound good? Yes. All right. Y'all got your notes ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. The title of my message this morning, if you are taking notes, is... Dunamis and division. Dunamis and division. Give me a second to write that down. If you got your Bibles, feel free to open up to the book of Luke. Coming out of Luke 11, 14 through 23. It'll be up on the Sky Bible in case you do not have one. But y'all ready for the Word of God? Yes, sir. Woo! Now he was casting out a demon that was mute. The end. No. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others to test him kept saying from kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid to waste. And a divided house, household falls. And if Satan is also divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judge. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he was entrusted and divides his spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. 
Bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> All right, let's pray and let's get into it. Sound good? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Father God, this morning, right now, have your way. Yes. Right now, have your way. Holy Spirit, continue to rule and reign in this space. God, we are not making room. You own the room. God, here at Takeover Church, just come and do whatever it is you see fit to do. Right now, we just recognize that your word is a double-edged sword capable of pierce between bone and marrow. God, change us today how you see fit. Make us look more like you, God. Whatever it is that's farthest from you within us still, God, clean it up. Make it pure. Make us look more like Jesus as we leave here today. In Jesus' mighty name, a faith-filled church said, Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Dunamis and division. Dunamis and division. I love this piece of scripture. I do. I love it because here again we see Jesus and he is talking to his disciples. And really, this is all based around continuing off the thought of last week. We're talking about being clothed in dunamis. So here in this portion of scripture, we are going to see, as my hope today, that we leave here understanding what it looks like and what it should look like. For a believer, for a son, for a daughter of the Most High Christ, someone who would confess and say that they are a Christian. It is my goal here today that we leave here understanding what it looks like to be clothed in God's ability, to be cloaked in God's power, to be dripped in dunamis. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. So here, dunamis and division. Dunamis and Division. I love this portion of Scripture. And in this moment of Scripture, we are literally seeing Jesus himself physically, tangibly, in person, show his disciples how to cast out a demon. So welcome to Demonology 101 today. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's later. But here we see this moment. We see this moment where Jesus goes to cast out out this demon and it says that the demon is mute that the demon is causing this person to be mute to not be able to speak to rendering him silent to rendering him benign and honest to god as i was preparing this message this this is kind of a bit of a a, a bunny show here but as i was preparing this message i just felt like a very simple word for our church for our season for where we are we kind of have to get this on the inside of us a little bit that there are some things in our lives that will try to keep us silent there are things in our lives that we have begun to entertain sometimes where you begin to feel like you know what? i can't lift up a prayer you know what? i can't speak that word over my life you know what? i want to believe this but right now i'm having literally the hardest time uttering god's truth over my life i can't prophesy i can't speak in tongues i can't pray i can't ask somebody else to pray i am so desolate on the inside and destitute on the outside that i cannot even begin to speak and i don't find it by happenstance that this moment in Scripture, as Jesus showing his disciples what it looks like to cast out a demon, a spirit over somebody's life that has kept them silent. Friends, make no bones about it. If the enemy can keep you silent, he can take away your ability to speak. And if he can take away your ability to speak, he can take away your ability to walk in your dynamics, God-given power and ability. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And there are some things in our lives that a lot of us have started to entertain that we have welcomed into our homes, that we have allowed to be in our lives and our sphere of influence that we may not even realize that it's influencing us, but suddenly we find ourselves in a season where we can't lift up the promises of God, where we can't lift up a shout of praise, where we can't even begin to recognize His love and His favor and grace over our lives. Friends, if that is us, then we got to begin to call these things what it is. And that is an influence, that is a specter, that is a spirit, that is a demon, that is some influence from the outside because God's purpose for His kingdom and for His children, you and me, is that we would speak with dunamis authority, God's ability. And when we do that, life comes. When we do that, death has to go. Life and death are in the power of the tongues and those who use it will reap of its fruit is what our Bible says. I believe today that we're going to get some people right now 
right now underneath the weight of the name Jesus, if that's you and you feel like you haven't been able to lift up the promise of God over your life, you haven't been able to repeat scripture over your life, if you feel like your relationship with him has gone one-sided and silent on the other end, would you shoot your hand up? No shame. Shoot your hand up right now. Shoot your hand up. Yes, in the hand. There's hands. Come on, people. I know there's more. There we go. There we go. Right now underneath the mighty name of Jesus. I believe for whatever authority that is, whatever stronghold your life has been open to, it crumbles right now yeah. underneath the one name, not Matt's name, not your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. I believe that we're going to leave here today with our mouths open and the ability to open the mouths of those who are held captive and silent. Yes, good. Does that sound good? That sounds yeah. Great. Friends, here is a moment in Scripture where Jesus is literally, tangibly, physically showing his disciples how to cast out a demon. This is crazy, right? This is crazy. It's not every day that you and me, we see at least, <laughs> we would probably do actually, we probably see a lot of demons that we just don't recognize. But this is a moment where there's a very clear disturbance in the force going on. And Jesus, surrounded by Pharisees, surrounded by other doubters, and surrounded by his disciples, he is showing them literally how to cast out a demon and what this looks like, friends. And all of a sudden, you see the Pharisees, and they start going, Psh, he's not the Messiah. He might be a prophet. He might be um, John the Baptist come back, which timeline does he make sense? Those prophets, those Pharisees are dumb. Uh, he might be Elijah. <sighs> Literally a thing that they said. Wouldn't even make sense. But they start casting all of those doubt, and then some Pharisees speak up and they go, Well, maybe he's you know, maybe he's a demon. Maybe he's a demon casting out another demon. No, I think he's a lot of gathable. Prince of demons. Start throwing out huge names like that. And all of a sudden you see that there's more people around him. Maybe it's disciples, maybe it's people who are trying to trick him, get him to perform some magic tricks. And they're trying to get him to do more acts of heaven, it says, which is absolutely the appropriate way of calling deliverance is an act of heaven. Okay? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, the word says, knowing their hearts. He says this phrase, but before we get to that phrase, clearly there is a bunch of confusion happening in this moment, isn't there? There's a lot of confusion that is happening. Some people are saying he's this. Some people are saying he's that. There's a lot of talk around the town. There's a lot of words being thrown around, a lot of slander, a lot of gossip. And it's all right there happening. There's a lot of confusion. Friends, can I just tell you today that confusion is the breeding ground for dysfunction? Confusion? Is the breeding ground for dysfunction? Like confusion will always manifest in dysfunction, and then dysfunction will always manifest in defeat. Confusion will always lead to dysfunction, and dysfunction will always lead to being defeated. Friends, I believe that is because. What Jesus says next is absolutely astounding and absolutely incredible and something we need to leave here with today, understanding. He says, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. And then he goes on to take another step further. We'll get to why it's another step further. But he says, a house divided against itself will fall. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand, and a house divided against itself will not fall. Now, this is something that we're all pretty familiar with, right? Would you agree? We've probably heard this phrase. Maybe yeah. you said it, you heard it in school, or you heard it in some youth ministry growing up, or Awanas, like, I want to leave here. Like, you maybe heard this at some other point in time. You know it's true. You know it's true. You know it's true. But well, you may have heard this before. It's so much so that maybe you were in a public school because this is something the world has now taken on. The world has ripped this from Jesus. They have stolen this from Jesus. They have taken this from Jesus. And the world itself at large already acknowledges this as well. Look at the political scheme. Look at the world that we live in. People are understanding this. That a house divided cannot stand. A kingdom divided will not remain. Like this is something that every corner of the earth understands, recognizes, and is shouting at large right now. Kids are having a riot. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. 
<laughs> but what's, in, what's incredible to me is as much as maybe the church and the world have recognized this as facts, I think that we fail to recognize. I think we fail to recognize. The brevity, the ramifications, the consequences of this function. I think we fail to recognize the severity of division. Confusion will lead to dysfunction, and dysfunction will manifest in division. And we will fail to recognize that time and time again. And I wonder what that means. Because here's Jesus, right? Like, what does that look like for our lives? I believe if we get this today, we will leave here walking in such great, dynamic, God-given power and ability. If we can just nail down this sentence that Jesus says. Because I look... Let's start with the kingdom. I look at the kingdom, right? I look at the kingdom. And kingdom, man, the kingdom doesn't operate in division, does it? Kingdom of God doesn't operate in division, does it? It doesn't thrive in division. It doesn't go forward in division. It doesn't make moves in division. It doesn't make converts in division. It does not go forth and proceed in the mission and cause of Christ in the earth in division. But we also recognize, we also recognize, y'all ready for this? We're going to be slow rolling this one. But we also recognize that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God's undefeated. The kingdom of God cannot be overthrown. The kingdom of God cannot be undertaken. The kingdom of God cannot be taken down. The kingdom of God will never fall to the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of God will never be laid to waste. Jesus himself says, a kingdom divided will be laid to waste. But we know, we know that we know that we know throughout scripture, the kingdom of God will never be laid to waste. So what is Jesus saying here? Friends, there is a dynamic ability that cannot be birthed in this world through division. There is a dynamic power that can never come via division. And so Jesus, he says, the kingdom divided against itself will be laid to waste. But we know, as Christians, the kingdom of God is undefeated, cannot be defeated. So often, I look around and I'm talking to Christians, obviously. I'm talking to Christians and I see defeat and I see disenfranchised and I see disillusion and I see discontentment and I see a spirit of being defeated and I see people's lives being laid to waste. I see Christians being laid to waste. I see Christians who would claim to be a part of the kingdom of God, yet their lives, their spirituality, their hope, their faith, their lives as a whole are being laid to waste. And often I pause and I have to ask myself and evaluate myself. If I am building the kingdom of God that is undefeated, then how am I being laid to waste? Friends, could it be this morning that so often in our lives, while we claim to be building the kingdom of God, instead we are building a kingdom of our thoughts on God? Could it be this morning? Our lives are destitute. Our lives are being laid to waste. We are disillusioned with everything that's going on. Could it be that we are claiming from the rooftops, we are here to build your kingdom, God? And yet we are just being destroyed 
Could it be that we are building the kingdom of God based on God's thoughts on God, but we're attempting to build the kingdom of God based on our thoughts about God? Could it be the reason we're being laid to waste is that we quit at some point building His kingdom the way He says to build it, the way He says to live it, the way He says He designed it? Is it possible that the reason we have so much confusion, dysfunction, and division happening within our own lives is because at some point along the journey with Jesus, we stopped building the kingdom of God based on God's thoughts on God, and we start building the kingdom of God based on our thoughts on God. Could it be? Am I preaching anybody this morning? Yeah. Could it be? Because he's undefeated. The kingdom of God is undefeated. I am suffering defeat, catching L's left and right. I have got dysfunction and division manifesting in my life. Friends, if we are having dysfunction and division manifesting in our lives, then potentially I would dare say that we at some point, we got off the track of building God's kingdom based on who God says he is. And we started building our kingdom based on who we think God is. He's undefeated. Yet I've got more losses on the scoreboard than I do wins. What could that mean? Kingdom divided against itself will be laid to waste. What have I been believing about God that God doesn't believe about Himself? What have I been believing about God that God doesn't believe about Himself? What have I been believing about God that God does not believe about himself? What division in my life have I been creating? What space of division have I been occupying? If there is a certain level of dynamic God-given ability that only comes way, by the way of unity, what have I been believing about God that God doesn't even believe about himself? I mean, what's a... What's a greater definition for division today? What's a greater definition for division today than actively believing something about God that God doesn't believe about himself? What's a greater device? What's greater division? What could literally define that more? Division is when we believe things about God and we build up things about God that God has never said and never believed about himself. This is division. This will be laid to waste. This will lead us. So many of us, man, God can heal, but he can't heal me. Division. Well, God used to heal back then, but he doesn't heal now. Division. Oh, God can rescue their sexuality, but not mine. Division. Oh, God can rescue their marriage, but not mine. Division. Oh, God can speak through him, but not through her. Division. So many of us, we are living lives of call of God, and we are being defeated, catching out, and being laid to waste. We are in a spiritually bankrupt generation because we have built a kingdom of God based on thoughts of God that he does not have about himself. We good? Yeah. Could it be? Could it be that the reason we are experiencing these things and this is what life looks like is because we have not resigned ourselves and resolved within ourselves what God in His Word and through His Holy Spirit has been trying to tell us about Himself. What kingdom have I started building in Matt McClure's life? What is it that Matt McClure does not believe about God? I 
love what Jesus actually follows it up with next. I think what Jesus does here is he actually brings it back home because he says, a house, a house divided against itself will fall. A house divided against itself will fall. Jesus is saying two different things here, friends. Kingdom, house. And when I think of house, I think of you and me. I think about you and me. You see, we are now the dwelling place for God. We are now the home for the Holy Spirit. Friends, you and me, we are the new tabernacle. Can we just stay there for a second? I feel like that's a word for our church. I feel like that's a word for the church at large, but for specifically Takeover Church Grand Rapids 2021, it is our resolve, it is our mandate, it is our cause, and our crusade, and our conviction with Christ that we will be a people recognized as a new tabernacle. Right. We're going to host the presence of God. We're going to house the Holy Spirit. We're going to take God at His word. We are the new tabernacle. You are a vessel for the Holy Spirit. Well, once had to be a place where only holy men could dwell, or else they would be set ablaze by the presence of God. You and me are now the new tabernacle. Amen? But Jesus, he says, house divided against itself will fall. Will fall. And so if a kingdom divided, if division in the kingdom divided, it's when we begin to build a kingdom of God based on things that God does not believe about himself, but about what we believe about God, then what causes a home to fall? Could it be this morning that a reason that you and I are experiencing such pushback such division in need of such deliverance and healing in our lives. Could it be that we have begun to make a home based off thoughts on ourselves that God does not have about ourselves? Could it be we have begun to construct a home, make a life here, build something within ourselves right here. We have begun to construct this thing that's supposed to be a tabernacle, the housing unit, the vessel for the Holy Spirit. We are a sister for God in the earth. And yet, so often, we are defeated. Could it be that we have designed our homes based off thoughts on ourselves that God does not have about ourselves? Could it be that we have constructed homes based on a design that we have for ourselves that God does not have for ourselves? Could it be? Because here's one of the things I think about. Here are one of the things I think about. I have seen so many Christians, so many Christians, myself included. I've seen so many Christians that we have taught ourselves. Hear me. We have talked ourselves. We have self-evaluated. We have tried to get so self-aware about a situation, about something that God has done. We are such silly little creatures that we have actually talked ourselves out of physical, literal, tangible miracles that have happened in our lives. I have seen people self-talk themselves out of their healing. They just had to go home and think about it. They just had to get with some spiritual leaders and talk it through. They could not just accept the miraculous thing that God said about them that they don't necessarily believe about themselves. Instead, we have left here and we have gone and we have self-evaluated. And it was out of that self-talk that we have talked ourselves out of that moment where the dynamic power and ability of God struck through the stratosphere and healed our bodies. 
He has given us a word of knowledge. He gave us a vision. And things have not come to pass. They did not go the way we saw them going. We received the word and there was a quote unquote glitch in the matrix. But the glitch of the matrix is because we left that space in that place with God and we began to evaluate and believe things about ourselves that God does not believe about ourselves. That, friends, is division. That is not occupying unity. That is occupying division. Unity always brings God's ability. Amen? Unity always brings God's ability. Amen? Unity always brings God's ability. Yeah. Friends, has anybody ever left a self-talk? I just need to go and understand myself. I just need to take a long, hard look at myself. I just need to go look in the mirror and understand me better. I need to go and self-evaluate. Has anybody ever looked on the inside of themselves and walked away with more faith? Has anybody actually ever left self-evaluation and believed that their marriage could be restored? Has anybody ever actually left self-evaluation and thought, man, I can go and heal the masses? Has anybody left self-evaluation and thought, you know what, I can go and deliver somebody from demonic oppression? Has anybody ever left self-evaluation and thought they were worthy at all of the call of God on their lives? I've never looked in the proverbial mirror and left with more faith. I don't need to know more about me. The more I know about me, the more divided I am. I don't need to know more about Matt McClure. I don't need to look inside. I don't need to figure out how I work. I don't need answers to the question of what I do, I don't do, what I want to do, I don't do. Neither than Paul in that scripture, that's what he's saying. We don't need the answer to this. I don't need to go and search Matt to find Matt. I need to go and search God to find Matt. I need to go and learn about God to find that. I need to go and evaluate God to find that. Friends, I don't need an Enneagram with a wing on it to tell me and to loop down what I am to understand what I am. I don't need some fallen man-made system and device designed to help me understand my fallen nature better. I need God. I need God. Friends, you and I, we are made. We are made in the image of God. Do you understand what that means? With his image becomes access to his power. With his image comes access to his ability. With his image comes access to his assurance. His godly sovereignty, full on self-assurance that he is who he says he is. And if he is who he says he is, then I am certainly who he says I am. But I begin to build a home. I begin to fall apart. I begin to fall the second I step out of who God says I am. And I start believing what everybody else and everything else is telling me that I am. Including myself. Friends. I would understand if you were made in the image of yourself. The need for an Enneagram test or personality test. I would understand the need if you were made in the image and likeness of your parents, to have some self-evaluation, self-discovery go on. I would understand that. But you weren't made in your own image. You weren't made in your parents' image. You were made in the image of God in heavens, Lord above the earth and below. You were made fearfully and wonderfully. What that means is, is that you were made with such respect awe, reverence, and awestruck wonder. God put so much time and planning and perfection into designing who you were made to be. That you were created in His own image. But we have begun to build a life and build a home based off fallen constructs and fallen understandings of what a man or a woman is based on other fallen men and women trying to tell you. Friends, today I want to declare to you a kingdom divided 
cannot stand, but a kingdom united will reign supreme. A house divided will fall, but a house united, that's the light of the world. Friends, what you and I, what we are in desperate need of isn't greater self-evaluation. It's greater, it's greater understanding of who God is. Because when I know who God is, I will know who I am. I'm made in His image. Yeah. He knit me together. So many of us, we have lived lives on the corner at the crossroads of a street called Dunamis and Division. Both are adequately available to you, readily available to you. Both are a reality of which we can exist in, but we have got to decide how are we going to build the kingdom and how are we going to build our home? How are we going to build the kingdom? How are we going to build our home? Friends, today, I feel like some of us are in desperate need of leaving the house of God with the understanding the truest thing about you is God. The truest thing about baby Noah and the back shall be down is God. The truest thing about you, someone who's struggling with adultery, is God. The truest thing about you, someone with substance abuse issues, is God. The truest thing about you, person who's hungry for more of God, is God. The truest part about us today. They are not your flaws. They are not your history. They are not your four with a wing on a seven because somewhere in there you're a challenger in the middle of the night. It is not that. And I know it's something like I'm going hard on. That's great for the world. But don't think that you can dilute the image of God down into ten sections. He's bigger than that, and so are you. Right. Friends, if we are not occupying unity, then we are living from division. Can I ask you a couple questions today? Would that be all right? What do you have access to? that you have believed yourself out of? What do you have access to that you have believed yourself out of? What power, what wonder-working power? We are all Christians. You know what that means? It means we have a specific assignment and we got a general assignment and everybody's general assignment is to go Make disciples, deliver people, bring healing, take care of the widows and the poor, and spread the news of Jesus. But friends, you're not beautiful enough to accomplish that. You're not strong enough to fulfill that. You're not smart enough to fulfill that. I'm not brave enough to fulfill that. My shoulders aren't big enough to fulfill the call of God of the Christian in this earth. We have got to be clothed in dunamis, godly power and ability. But so many of us we never see a calling come about. We never see the word come to fruition. We never see our lives end up being and ending in that place that God says you were supposed to because we have been, we have begun be building a kingdom of God based off our thoughts on God, not God's thoughts on himself. We have begun building our home, who and what we are, based on our perception of ourselves rather than God's perception of ourselves. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? 
Dynamics can only come via unity. If you are not united in Christ, you see, Jesus is pretty incredible. He, he says in this moment, later on towards the end, because they start saying, you know, Pharisees start saying, well, you know, maybe he's a demon. And he goes, well, a demon can't cast out another demon. That sentence stuck with me. And I started thinking about that. What does Jesus mean a demon can't cast out another demon? Well, a demon can't cast out another demon because if Satan was working against himself, his, his kingdom would surely fall. But what can cast out a demon? The sons and the daughters of the Most High God. You see, there's something about a son and a daughter of God. They know their father. They've been raised by their father. They've been around their father. They've seen their father do the work. They've seen the father do the talk. They've seen him speak. They've done what he said. They were raised up in the family business. They've learned their father's trade and they've learned it well so that they can take over. Heck, they even look like their father because they are clothed in some hand-me-downs from their father. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Do you see where this is going? Friends, sons and daughters, they believe their father and they know their father. They don't have individualized perceptions of who their dad is. They have actual relationship with their dad and they know him based on who he is who he says he is. They know him based off who, what he is and what he can do. These are sons and these are daughters. And this is what it looks like. I wonder this morning, do we believe God is who he says he is? God says he can heal. God believes he can heal. Do you believe that? God believes he can raise the dead to life. Do you believe that? Shoot, we'll take it up another notch. God believes that you can heal and you can raise the dead to life. Do you believe that? Or are we going to continue to lead, lead and live lives divided and apart from what God has said about us? Or are we going to live lives united in Christ Believing God is who He says He is and what He has spoken over us. You are a son. You are a daughter. The truest thing about you is God. And it's your eyes. It's not your skin color. It's not your hair. It's not your history. It's not your nationality. It's not what part of Pangea you came from. It is God. And Jesus, He goes on to say, Worship team, you can make a way. He goes on to say, He says, You are either with me or you are against me. You are either with me or you are against me. Being with God, first and foremost, is believing in God. Being with God is first and foremost believing God. It's undeniable. He is who He says He is. He can do what He says He can do. He, he is everything that He has ever expressed. And He says, you're either with me or against me. Friends, could I that challenge us a bit this morning, maybe give us a little heed of a warning that we have actually, we all actually have some beliefs about God that have actually worked against God. He says, you're either with me 
or you are against me? Are you with me in healing? Are you with me in prophecy? Are you with me in the fact that I want to see Jesus take over people's lives? Are you with me? Will you lay down your life? Present yourself a living sacrifice? Will you give what I've said to give? Will you talk to those I said to talk to? Will you go where I'm telling you to go? What is it that you believe about me? And what is it that you believe about me that is actually against me? I don't need self-evaluation for that. I need to search my father. I need to evaluate my dad. I need to search him so far that I find out who I am and who he is and I walk in who he is and who he says I am. I don't want to be against Jesus. I don't want my life to reflect being against Jesus. I don't want to be a set apart from God. I want to be set apart with God. Jesus says he is will change every 
area of your life. Would you guys just stand your feet? Who Jesus says he is? Church. Who Jesus says he is will reveal to you who you are. The mirror for your life is not a personality test. The mirror for your life is not my ideas for your life. The mirror for your life isn't your family's idea for who you are. The mirror for your life, look no further than Jesus. It's only when you look in the face of Jesus that you'll see your future. It's only when you look in the face of Jesus that you'll see your hope. It's only when you look in the face of Jesus that you'll see your anchor. It's only when you look in the face of Jesus that you'll receive your healing.
breaking of chains. Jesus, that they would just lift their hand right now, Father God, in proclamation that they need you. I see those hands. I see those hands. My hands are up, Father God. We need you so desperately. Jesus, we pray. We pray with our, our true voice from our spirit, Father, that we accept you and we love you and we, we acknowledge you as the one true God. There are no other idols that we want cluttering up our mantle place. Jesus, we want you. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. We pray that your will would be done and that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus, we just lift up the marriages in this community, Father God, that there would be more love, that there would be more kindness, more love, Jesus. And for those that are preparing for marriage, Father, we just pray for all the learnings that they can get before they tie the knot, Jesus. All those good and crucial bits and pieces of wisdom to prepare them for communication and, and for the two becoming one, Father, right now. We just lift up our relationships to you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.